Hello Tech World, this is Tech Thoughts. In this short video, we'll be discussing how to perform post nano server deployment customization using the setupcomplete.cmd file and PowerShell. As always, if you prefer written documentation, you can check out the corresponding article for this topic on the techthoughts.info blog, which will also include all the source code that you'll see demoed here today. Let's go ahead and get started. So the image creation process allows you to specify a lot of settings inside the image, but you will likely find yourself wanting to configure some additional customizations in your post deployment for Nano. These customizations can be accomplished via the setupcomplete.cmd file, which is contained within your Nano server image. I have the Nano Deploy uh, VHDX here for demonstration today. And if you don't have a Nano server image, please go ahead and check out my previous video on Nano server image creation first. So to get access to that setupcomplete.cmd file, I'll just mount this VHDX by right clicking and mount. And we can see that it's gone ahead and assigned a drive letter. And I'll go ahead and navigate to Windows, Setup, Scripts. And you can see here that this is where my setupcomplete.cmd file is. This file serves as a run once. And when Nano Server initially is deployed, on the first run, the setupcomplete.cmd file will be executed. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the contents of this file. And in order to do so, we'll need to edit it as an administrator. So what I'll go ahead and do is launch a notepad window as an administrator. And I will copy this file path and open this so that when I edit it, I can actually save it. All files and set up complete and open. So we can see by looking at the contents that some customizations have already been specified, likely during the image creation process. And we can see here that this is set to configure WinRM for this nano server device on port 5985 and allow the necessary firewall rules. And it's also going to be setting the central standard time zone. Using basic Windows shell scripting, you can set a wide variety of customizations within the setupcomplete.cmd file itself. I personally find PowerShell a little simpler and more robust to use. So rather than coding things directly inside the setupcomplete.cmd file, I'm going to have this setupcomplete file run a custom PowerShell script that contains all of my desired customizations for my nano server. In order to do this, we'll have to copy a few lines inside of the setupcomplete file. And again, you can reference this exact example on the techthoughts.info blog. But essentially what I'm accomplishing here is I'm going to set the execution policy to allow custom PowerShell scripts to run. And I'm specifying the name of the PowerShell script that I want the setup complete file to execute. You can name this file whatever you like. I've named mine nano setup.ps1. Okay, with those extra lines added, we can go ahead and save this and just confirm that those settings took and we see that they have. And now what I'll need to do is copy in my PowerShell customization script into the same location on my nano server image. All right, let's just briefly take a look at the contents of the script. So just performing some basic customization tasks on the post deployment, I'm gonna set the IP address of the first up adapter that we find. I'm gonna set the DNS server for that adapter, disable all IPv6 traffic, going to disable any unused adapters and join the domain and reboot. So we've got our IP information specified here. We're going to find our first up adapter and get that index number to perform customizations against. We're going to clear any existing IP information off that adapter, set the gateway and IP address, set the DNS servers, disable IPv6 since we're not using that in this test environment, disable any unused adapters, and join the domain, and then followed by a reboot. Just some pretty basic post-deployment customizations. So at this point, with the setup complete file altered to run the custom PowerShell script, and the PowerShell script itself located on your nano image, you would be good at this point to deploy the image. It would execute the setup complete command file, which would also execute the nano setup file. However, since in the script I'm specifying a domain join, we'll need to perform one additional step to make sure this is successful. So Nano Server is not capable of joining a domain in the traditional sense, but it is capable of performing an offline domain join. So we'll need to hop over to a domain controller, and we'll need to create a computer object with the same host name as the new Nano Server deployment. So I'll create a new computer. Call this 
nano tests, which is going to be the same host name. And with that object created, I now need to create the odj blob file by running the following command. So I'll change this to nano test. This is going to use the djoin to provision that odj blob file for that object that I just created. I'm going to go ahead and click play. And that was successful. And I'll find that since I did a dot backslash in the C files, because that's where I executed this script from. So I'll navigate to that location, and we do indeed see the odj blob file. And I'll copy that. And that needs to be moved over to my nano server image. Now note in my script here that I've specified that the odj blob file is going to be in C temp of my nano server. So that's where I'll need to place it on my nano server image. Okay, and just to recap, we have our odj blob file, which we created off of our domain controller that has the same host name as our deployment. That's located in ctemp because the PowerShell script is referencing that location. We also have under C Windows setup scripts, the setup complete file, which has been altered to run our custom PowerShell script and our PowerShell script itself which is performing several post-deployment customizations. With all that in place, I can go ahead and unmount that VHDX, and it is now ready for deployment. All right, so with that image finalized, I've gone ahead and copied it over to a hypervisor, and I've created a new VM and attached that VHDX. So this nano server is now ready to start. So we'll go ahead and click that Start button. And we'll go ahead and start pinging it with that new IP that I've provisioned in the post-deployment tasks. All right, so that's starting up. And we can see how fast that is. That set of complete file is already executed. That executed our startup script, which you can see here from the pings, properly provisioned our IP address, and it initiated a reboot from that script. OK. I should now also be able to log in as a domain user. Domain credentials are working. And all of our IP information is as we specified in the PowerShell script. I hope you found this video on nano server post deployment customization helpful. And don't forget to check out the corresponding article on the techthoughts.info blog.